think that after so many centuries of dealing with distance, the mathematicians of this world would have at least a ballpark notion of what this word means. You'd be surprised. To this very day, the experts rely on synonyms. In mathematics, a distance is a length, and a length is a distance. The word length is typically used synonymously with distance. The distance between two points is the length of a straight line between them. Length is defined as the straight line distance between two points along an object. <laughs> so what have we learned? Is there no difference between the length of one loaf of bread and the distance between two of them? It is absolutely mind-boggling to learn that the mathematicians of this world have never noticed that there is a qualitative difference between length and distance. For the purposes of science, length is what one object has. Length, the continuous matter lying between two surfaces. Conversely, the word distance alludes to the space that lies between two objects. Distance, the space separating two surfaces. A handy one-liner that synthesizes these two notions is... Distance lies between lengths. But if our mathematicians fail to notice that there is a qualitative difference between length and distance, they fail to notice something even more fundamental. The mathematicians are alluding to neither the length of an object, nor to the distance between two of them. A mathematician has no use for static concepts such as length or distance. Mathematics is exclusively a discipline that studies dynamic concepts. The distance between two points is... <laughs> is the length of the path connecting them. When the mathematicians use the word distance, they are alluding to a movie of the distance traveled by a ball. Sometimes the mathematicians measure distance traveled by laying tiles. More often, the mathematicians measure distance traveled by counting seconds. Distance is sometimes expressed in terms of time to cover it. In the theory of relativity, we now define distance in terms of time and the speed of light. So clearly the dynamic distance traveled by one object has nothing to do with the static distance between two objects. The mathematicians may argue that distance traveled is the authentic notion of distance of mathematics, but then they are misleading you when they use the word distance. Distance traveled is dynamic. Distance is static. Distance traveled is a movie. Distance is a photograph. Actually, the mathematicians have a purpose for referring to distance traveled as distance. This enables them to use several definitions simultaneously. A mathematician alludes to the qualitative static distance of physics, but explains the theory with the distance traveled of mathematics. A case in point is the contraction theory of special relativity. Relativists claim that if you are standing next to a tree and a particle known as a muon zips by you almost at the speed of light, the distance from the muon to the tree up ahead contracts. The question is whether the static distance between the two trees shrank. If the answer is no, then relativists must be referring to the distance between the muon and the second tree, in which case the muon somehow moved closer to the tree. Again, it would be irrational to claim that the static distance between the muon and the tree contracted. For instance, if there was a rock sitting peacefully on the ground near the muon, did the distance between the rock and the second tree contract? Therefore, the mathematicians are referring to distance traveled. The fatal problem here is that the muon has yet to travel this distance. The distance at issue is invariably the static distance between two objects of physics, and not the distance traveled of mathematics. The mathematicians are invoking the distance already traveled by the muon to calculate a distance the muon has yet to travel. But assuming the distance in front of the muon has shrunk while the distance between the trees remains the same, 
It is the muon which has somehow moved closer to the second tree. This implies that the rate at which the muon traveled from the first tree exceeded the speed of light. This rate is a violation of the principle of special relativity that states that a particle may not travel faster than light. Yet a more fundamental problem with the distance traveled of mathematics is that it is surrealistic and has no place in science. Let's illustrate this with an example. In order to establish the distance the moon traveled, the mathematician freezes the entire universe, stretches her tape from a now imaginary location the moon occupied a while ago to its present location, and then allows the universe to continue its course. The mathematicians have, in effect, superimposed a movie on a photograph. The distance traveled of mathematics is neither the length nor the distance of physics. Quantitative distance traveled is a surrealistic concept that belongs exclusively in religion. Rational humans should reject Einstein's absurd length contraction theory. The ridiculous physical interpretations of relativity have no place in science.